Welcome to Sew Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund, and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, or make the dance sport, country, and skate dress of your dreams. Now, this is part two in taking a look at this ball gown. But what we're going to talk about today is how not to just leave it as a ball gown. What kind of changes can we do to turn it into a lantern or skate dress? What kind of changes can we make? to turn it into a standard gown? How can we re reimagine this dress to make it look different while still maintaining the integrity? Now, who does this apply to? This applies to any of you really who are, if you're having a dress custom made by a professional dressmaker and you say, oh, I love this design element. If you are buying a used dress online and trying to revamp it, if you have an older dress that you just want to update, or of course, if you're doing my favorite, which is making your dress from scratch, you can take design elements from this. Which brings up something really important that I have failed to say in any of my other videos, which I think is crucial. Please do not ever duplicate someone else's design. I mean, head to toe, do not duplicate it. It's not fair to you, and it's certainly not fair to the person who paid thousands of dollars or spent dozens of hours making the dress. And I had this happen once to a client, oh, 10 or 15 years ago, I'm dancing in California. The first time she wore the dress, great. Everything went fine. The second time she wore the dress a few months later, someone walked out into a heat, luckily not her heat, but over that at the same competition wearing a shabby, poor fitting, identical dress. And she was just pissed and <laughs> crestfallen. And I was not a happy camper at all. You just, you don't. So please <laughs> do not ever ask your dressmaker, whoever that is, to, to duplicate something from scratch. And please, if you make your own dresses, don't ever duplicate it. You can take design elements, but always make it your own, always make it an original. Which brings us back to how do we tweak this? <laughs> Um, if you're doing Latin or skate, by all means, don't have a long skirt, of course, right? This would be super cute um, while still main... So what, when I say maintaining the integrity of this dress, this is a very sleek, fitted, no-nonsense sort of dress. And so you wouldn't want to put, say, fringe for a Latin or skate skirt on this because fringe is really fun and kind of sassy and not congruent with what's going on up at the top. They would not have the same kind of elements. Um, if you did layers and layers and layers of ruffles for a Latin and skate skirt, also not really appropriate because it would be too feminine for this really sleek, sexy look. Um, you could do little um, gode inserts that had rhinestoning like this, and it would be kind of like this band here, except it could be little triangular inserts that you could do in green and black if you wanted to. That would look fantastic for a Latin or skate skirt while still maintaining the, the primary design feel of the dress. This band would be great also, kind of in reverse really, because I've got solid print solid, whereas yours would be printed solid dress. And then you could do a band down here in black with these same kind of rhinestones. That would be super hot. You could totally rock that. And so you really have a lot of options to take this idea and use it for a Latin or skate skirt. For your standard gowns, floats are of course a great way to change the look of a dress. This particular dress was originally made um, or is a country western dress or great for a smooth dress. And so having detachable floats is a really fantastic way to completely change the look and feel of the dress. This is just a bracelet that I rhinestoned to match the top and then there's a hook and eye on it where you can hook pretty much anywhere on the black part of the dress so that it doesn't show. Now in this float, you'll notice that it has big sweeping lines. Let me pin that over here. It has big sweeping lines because it stays consistent with the feel of the dress. It has, you know, really strong, dramatic shapes. If it were to have, let's say like this, 
if we had a whole bunch of these hanging off of the dress in various places, then it feminizes the dress too much. It takes away from sort of that strong, uh, powerful look and it makes it overly feminine. So that would not necessarily be appropriate. And I'm telling you, really, I'm just like kicking out ideas here because this is what I do when I design a dress. And that way you, you start learning how to recreate, how to choose, how to make um, consistent choices, how to not have a dress that looks like it has it's that looks like it's a hamburger all the way. <laughs> so it's got lettuce, tomato, cheese, jalapenos, you know, pickles, onions, ketchup, mayonnaise, where it's got everything. This is more like a, um, when I design dresses, I like to have a well-paired dinner, not a dinner that has a little bit of everything. I like for all my flavors, my, you know, my wine, my, my entree, my side dishes to all be very cohesive and appealing. And I don't like hamburger all the ways <laughs> so much. Does that make sense? Especially not in a dress. And so as you're designing it, you'll just reverse your float, <laughs> essentially. Um, so floats are a great way to change this to a standard gown while maintaining the integrity of the dress. Um, adding volume to the skirt. This is a very sleek, minimalist skirt. And in that it really doesn't fly up very much. So you could come in and add some godets and add a lot of extra volume here. Volume would be fine. Froof is not fine. So I would probably not come in and add ruffles down here because ruffles would not be consistent with the strong look of this top. Um, you could add horsehair, crinoline overseas, horsehair we call it in the States, fishing line, anything like that to the hem to add a little extra volume. Um, you can, I think something that would be really cool would be to have like a little, a 3D flower right here that kind of stuck up, especially since 3D things are really popular right now. That would be awesome. And then you could have even more stones that then fade out into maybe something that's right here. So, so you can certainly update this or change it, not update, change it to suit your particular tastes. Um, sleeves would be great here um, because on this side view, the black comes up to a little point right here. Fantastic for adding sleeves. If you chose mesh sleeves, it might look great just to do a little border down at the bottom of rhinestones to sort of tie it all in, but it wouldn't be too expensive. If you want to make your sleeves out of black lycra to match this accent area here, you would need to rhinestone the entire sleeve, which would be super cool, but it would cost several hundred dollars plus a lot more time. So just sort of keep that into your time money budget. Um, and then of course there are all sorts of little things that you could change. These straps would look great in black. They would be just as good in black as they were are in flesh colored. Um, your, the rhinestones here, I don't think I told you this in the last video, I have on here Emerald, green tourmaline, peridot AB, and vitriol medium. The vitriol mediums have a pink, yellow, kind of a, an apple green color to them. They're awesome stones. Oh, and then there's jet stones all in between. So there's really a lot of stoning on all this black area. Um, so you don't have to do a tone on tone. You could take it and pair your apple green with a different color. And that way you get a really different feel for the dress without, um, you know, that's if you were just rhinestoning it from scratch. I don't recommend peeling off all these stones and going about it that way. But if you were starting the dress from scratch or completely redoing the top, you could consider pairing seemingly unusual colors. And that is pretty much it. I think I've helped you, given you ideas to convert it to all sorts of different types of dresses. So if you have found value here, please tell all your dancing, skating, sewing friends, and go to sewlikeapro.com. Leave your name and email address if you are not already signed up to receive the blogs, and that way you'll make sure you never miss one of these tips. And please leave me a comment below. Tell me what your favorite What's your favorite design idea here? What, what design change have you made on a dress or have you chosen on a dress and really loved it? Or what have you really hated and why? Because we all love to learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs>
All right, that is it for me. Thanks so much for joining me for part two of this. I will see you again another time.